Hello everyone, Nubkex here. Welcome back to Nub Raids. And in today's video, I want to give you my list for the top 20 champions in Hydra. Just overall, you know, no holds barred, just who are the 20 best? Let's do, actually, slightly holds barred. We're going to have a little caveat here. And by the way, this will hopefully be going live, an article on this as well, a written version on, on hellhades.com. We shall see, right? Obviously, you know, I, I'm... Uh, work part-time for them now as well, writing stuff. So I said, hey, I'm doing this video. This is my list. What do you guys think? So we'll see what they think. And maybe we'll have some group uh, group discourse and alter the list. And some version of this will go up on the site. And if it does well and all of that, maybe we'll keep revising this list, come up with perhaps a more detailed Hydra tier list moving forward. So let me know if that's something you want to see, what you think about it. It's kind of a, a mammoth task, to be honest. Like this was tough to narrow the list down, but there we go. Now, I said there was a caveat to this list, and that caveat is we have an entire second section, guys, for Trunda, okay? Trunda is in just a league of her own. I, I checked the leaderboards. There's a, a Discord for raid leaderboards. I checked the Hydra leaderboards, guys. On Nightmare Hydra right now, the top damage for a non-Trunda team is 3 billion damage on Nightmare Hydra, which is insane. That's 3 billion damage on Nightmare? Just crazy numbers. Well, that is until you look at the Trunda teams. The top damage for a Trunda team on Nightmare Hydra is almost 77 billion damage. In other words, Trunda... And Trunda teams are 25 times better <laughs> than other teams. If you said Trunda, just by using Trunda in your Hydra team, we will divide your score by 10. You know, you only get 10% of the score. You would still be easily outclassing every other team in the game. You would have to divide. You would have to make Trunda. Do it wouldn't quite work like that because, you know, there's sort of a snowball effect to how much damage you do. But, you know, it... In theory, inaccurately, facetiously, you could make Trunda do 20, you know, 1 25th of the damage she does right now, and you'd be equal to the other top champs in the game. Not quite, but you get the gist. Certainly if you applied the score multiplier, divide by 25, she'd be equal to the best, which is hilarious. So Trunda is in a league of her own, and obviously with Trunda teams, so the best, we won't break down in detail all the variations. We can do another video on that perhaps at some point, but you want two Yumiko, so Trunda, in the team, you want two copies of Yumiko because Yumiko can reset by three turns, which is enough. Basically, your whole team, which is really, really strong. And uh, the Yumikos can actually reset each other. This is unique. There's no other reset move in the game that can reset everything. I do see people say that, you know, Yumiko is the problem, not Trunda. Uh, but that's not true. You, you, you know, you don't have double Yumiko and these other chat. You don't have double Yumiko teams doing 75 billion damage with any other champion. It's only with Trunda. It's definitely both these champs are ridiculous, especially in combination. So they are in there. Uh, then you would want your Lady of the Death Siren. She is in there because she brings you that increased speed and strengthen, which is nice. She brings you the block buffs, which is nice, but she brings the decreased defense and weaken as well, which is the, the most important thing she brings. But the other utility is really good too. So that's going to massively up your damage. Uh, you want, this is a surprising one, who would have thought, of course, you know, back in the day that Gurptuk would be top tier for anything, but he is. Gurptuk's insane. The reason being, allies under poison do 7.5% more damage for each poison on them, stacking up to 30%. Pretty simple. 30% damage multiplier is nuts. This is really good. Probably we will see other champions come in and do better, like Feral the Barkhorn is not that far behind. We're going to actually talk about him on the list today, for instance, right? There's other champions that have potential here, and he does put three poisons on your team for three turns. Uh, so that's part of what's going on. And he brings the AoE block buffs to make it nice and consistent. But there are possibly other options like Feral that would be, you know, we'll see. We'll see as things go forward. But he's nuts, right? Just because 30% damage potential is really, really a lot. And then finally, of course, you want increased attack for Trunda. So you want to run the Shu Zen, the Valorous, with Trunda. She gives her increased attack, increased crit rate, increased crit damage, and an extra turn instantly. And you can just keep rotating through this stuff with your Trunda. It's it's nuts, right? Like you just keep resetting Trunda's A2, giving Trunda extra turns. Just go, go, go. Uh, Yumiko's resetting each other and resetting everything. And it's a whole bunch of fun. She also brings you increased speed, decreased speed, if, uh, which is helpful as well. 
And uh, yeah, she does some other stuff that's not too important. It's really all about that stuff. So yeah, that is the Trenda team. They are, they're in a league of their own. They're basically the top five champions for Hydra in the game right now. Uh, because the Trenda team is 25 times better than everything else. So they're their own list. Okay, there we go. Now, I also will mention, there are some honorable mentions for new champions that I'm not putting on this list. But maybe I'll do videos on them soon. We'll see. Toshiro the Bloody. He looks to be incredibly good, right? He's got the, the where is it? This, you know, scaling up his attack and his crit down and his HP. And he does damage but on both attack and HP. So he's a scaling champ with multi-hits and AoE. He looks like he could be really good. It's too early to say for sure. The Calamitous, I tested him out. I was very unimpressed, but he is also... Lots of these, basically the new champions of this patch are all seemingly intended to be Hydra champs, I think. But he's got the AoE decrease defense. Hex ignores this stuff, you know. He's supposed to be really good for Hydra. I wasn't too impressed, but we'll see with more testing. Maybe. Uh, Aestrid Dream Song. I think she has is really good. A lot of potential. She's not going to make the, the top 20 list here because she's just a bit too new. But she is very, very good. And then um, Wallmaster Atharion. I'm going to try to get a video on him soon as well. Uh, he's looking insane as well. AoE enemy max HP. Double hitter at block buffs. Decrease attack. Great stuff. He looks to be super good, but he is not going to make this top 20 list for now. So with that all being said, let's dive into the top 20 champions. The top 20, not super new, not Trunda team champions for Hydra. Let's go. So these are in no particular order as well, just because it's really hard to make an order. But I put them in an order that I thought would make a good narrative for the video. Uh, Lady Makage comes in as a definite pickup here. She is so good. Crazy base stats. She has an ally attack. Ally attack is extremely strong, especially a full team. Full team ally attack in Hydra, you got six people on your team. It's more than anything else. And especially when you've got multiple damage dealers in your team, that really powers things up. She also brings increased attack and crit damage, which... Crit damage is just a lot more damage. Well, a little bit more damage for your team. It's nice. Increased attack, a crucial buff if you're running attack-based damage dealers. Her A2 is also super good. It's an AoE attack, so that's cool. But it decreases enemy buffs and ally debuffs. It can remove all the true fears from your team. It can remove all the provokes from your team. It will remove, you know, other buffs a little bit. You know, the two turns go down to a one turn. They, they're much less dangerous. It helps decrease enemy buffs, though hopefully in Hydra they wouldn't really be getting them too much. Then it also increases enemy debuffs, which is fantastic, and it increases ally buffs as well. The buff manipulation here is insane. And then on her A1, if she's with someone from the Shadowkin, they will join in an ally attack when she does her A1. So Lady Makage is showing up in like all the top teams. She also does a cleanse on your main nuker on her passive, which is great. She's showing up on nearly all the top teams. She arguably is, you know, very close to number one if we were to do this as a strictly tier list type thing. She is insanely good. Uh, please let me get her soon. It's depressing at this point. Next up, a champion that, well, I will never get, sadly, is the Or N Archer, the Nergigante Archer. Limited time champion during the Monster Hunter promotion, which is over now. You can never get her. If you don't have her, you never, ever will. But she is absolutely top tier for Hydra too. Against bosses, so Hydra, three turn cooldown, AoE, three turn hex, and two turn provoke. Just glorious, especially for auto, right? The two turn provoke, two turns on provoke is, is very rare. And that's so consistent for locking down the head of decay. And then hex is an essential debuff as well for Hydra for maxim maximizing your damage. Also as an AoE against uh, Hydra bosses, three turn cooldown decrease speed. That gives you turn meter boost. Increased accuracy on her A1. She can actually mischief tank a bit. She heals you a lot with her passive ups her defense. So she does more damage. She's just sort of a jack of all trades. Crucial debuffs, the decrease speed. Uh, it's a very nice combo as well with the strong increase speed champions we've got in the game. She's a very powerful decrease speed champion to combo with them. Very strong. So yeah, she is just very, very good. You're lucky if you have her. If you don't, you like me are going to be crying. Next up then, a top tier damage dealer. I believe he is in the top non uh, trended team in the game. Taris the Fierce. You know, one of, why was Taris so OP in Arena? Or why is he so OP in Arena? Well, there's lots of reasons, but one part of them, one of those reasons, for sure, is he just does so much damage. He hits ridiculously hard, and that's exactly what makes him so good in Hydra. Even it scales more so. So, 
He does 15% more damage on his AoE for each buff on allies. Well, in Arena, you got four allies. In Hydra, you've got six allies. That's a lot of allies. That's a lot of buffs. You also have got more people to put out buffs. Great. So you can have more allies with more buffs to hit more hard. Amazing. So he absolutely slams like a truck. He also extends your ally buffs, which makes your team stronger. And yeah, he does some turn meter boosting on his A1, which is nice. He just hits hard on everything. He's an absolute beast. Uh, <laughs> like, I don't who, whoever tuned the damage on Taras was just like, let's make him just insane. Like, let's just let's just blow things out of the water here. Another champion, mythical. Another crazy damage dealer, Scarol Blood Maul. I believe that she is also, I think, in the top damage team uh, in the world. I believe. Actually, let me get let me get that up so I'm speaking correctly. Yeah, here you go. This is the 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 world record team right now. This is from uh, Sethes from Eternal Titans from ET. Uh, so, needless to say, you could expect slight spoiler warning here. Six, the champion's going to be on the top uh, the top twenty. Obviously, they're the, you know the top non trender team. You can see Taras. Almost top damage, but Garol does just about beat him out. Uh, Garol is insane for Hydra. Why is Garol so strong? Number one, we do have damage that scales off of buffs on the champion, which is strong with ignore defense. So this hits really hard, but the A1 is great. You do have the, the randomness of repeating the attack. The big deal here is the passive. Whenever an ally attacks, she has a 25% chance to team up and join in, right? So every time people are firing off attacks, She's coming in with an AoE, which then has a chance to repeat as well. The damage is just insane. Now, I think you don't get to really use... This passive is insane for Arena. 1% uh, more damage for every 1% HP lost. I don't think in Hydra it's really very easy to use that because you're typically going to be very high health. It's, it's hard to be low. It is worth noting. Uh, but yeah, this champion, the damage potential, as you can see, is completely bananas. Like, she, she's on a a crazy high level super super strong let's touch on actually a champion next that was in that top team which is krisk uh so krisk again he he has stood the test of time i i think you know back in the day a lot of the best teams were like duchess with krisk and like royal guards and husks and stuff you know things have really changed since then there's a lot more powerful champions now but krisk the ageless right he's aged really well in this you know uh, he's not been affected. Krisk remains on top. Cursed set has been a big part of that, right? Because he brings in AoEs, he's a great champion to run the Cursed set on. And he doesn't really do any damage anyway. So you're not losing out too much and putting him in that set. Um, he comes in, though. He mischief tanks. He protects your team with ally protection, makes you very tanky. And his passive helps as well. He can solo provoke with enough speed. He can solo provoke decay, even though it's only a one turn provoke. You can still do it. He brings in decreased speed as well, uh, which is great. But yeah, the buff extension, the team protection. He just has so much in his kit and he has remained relevant. So Chris remains on the top 20 list. Um, Duchess Lilitu does not make the list. Duchess has fallen off. Duchess has been replaced by ho, 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 a Christmas tree. Fair all the Barkhorn makes my top 20 list uh, firmly in the place of Duchess. I actually did a, a collab with YST on Feral recently. He has Feral and I don't. Um, and he was doing a video on him. YST put out a poll, you know, which champion would you rather have for Hydra, Feral or Duchess? And I think like 80 or 90% of people said Duchess. Feral is not only better, he's substantially better. You can see that video to see examples of how much like people's damage is increasing. Just a huge amount. Why is he so good? Well, if you don't need, and often you don't these days, you don't need the Duchess revive, he brings in the perfect veil as well, which is good. But he also brings increased resistance, which is really useful. He also brings in decreased accuracy to combo with it and AOE block buffs, which is great. He has a decreased speed A1, which is nice, but it's his passive, which is really insane. Bonus accuracy, bonus resistance, fantastic. So suddenly your whole team is a mischief tank with increased resistance and, and decreased accuracy. Great, everyone's a mischief tank. No debuffs, no mischief stuff for you. But this is the big thing. If an ally's under four or more buffs, and you can see that buffs are a huge part of the meta in Hydra, increases your damage dealt by 20%. It's just a 20% damage boost to your team. That's insane, right? Again, we're trying to maximize our damage in Hydra for Hydra Clash. As much damage as possible. 20% damage boost. Just no, And it's very easy to make this work. Even with just one buff extender in your team, which you would want to keep the perfect fail consistent. Uh, you're just, your team's going to go nuts. So Feral, I'm seeing him all the time. He's really popping off. 
one of the next champion is I think probably the most underrated champion quite possibly in the in the history of the game it's Varl the Destroyer nobody or almost nobody gets hyped up about Varl but Varl is insane I've seen Varl cropping up a ton in really really highly performing like billion plus damage nightmare teams Varl he's doing so well why is that well he has the attack scaling passive Scales up to 100% bonus attack. So he hits really freaking hard. The single target nature of his kit, he's got a massive single target hit in his A3. That's not a problem because single target hits in Hydra do more damage. There's AOE damage reduction. Single target claps, synergizes really well with Hex. But then the unique thing he brings, AOE decrease attack, that's quite useful. But AOE weaken is a big deal. It's something I mentioned with Aestrid. Aestrid Dream Song, the current fusion, really brought that to my mind. We don't have a massive amount of really top-tier weekend champions for Hydra, and Varl can fit into a lot of teams because of this, right? He can fit into a lot of teams. You just need increased attack on the team, and if you're getting decreased defense from somewhere else, he can bring in the weekend and just massively up the damage uh, that your team is doing. Yeah, he's, he's super underrated. I remember bringing Varl out, replacing Ninja with Varl, in the, the Hydra Clash stream we did with Dead with Jedi a while ago, and people were like, what the heck's going on? Uh, people really, you know, sleep on Varl, I think, all the time. Uh, but, uh, I mean, a lot of you guys in the community have come out and built way better teams than I ever did with Varl. So, yeah, he's next level. Uh, next up, we got a champion that obviously is a top 20 for Hydra. He's just insane. No surprise. We're going to see a lot of ally attack champs in the top 20. Cardiol is unique. He brings a speed aura, which is great. But Cardiol can heal your team, right? He can keep you alive. And he also brings you cleanses, block debuffs, and even a revive on death for safety. So he is like your support, keeping you alive, right? Sustaining the team, keeping them going. Um, but much like Feral has replaced Duchess because Feral ups your damage, uh, Cardiol does the keep your team alive job while also bringing a ton of damage. So he's got increased crit rate, crit damage with a full team ally attack. That's big. Also, on his passive, he has a 15 bucks to 30% chance to team up whenever an ally attacks, and he does a little ally attack, which, number one, actually heals you a surprising amount, but number two, it's just adding on that damage, which is a really big deal. So Cardiel comes into so many of these top teams. He's an absolute monster. Uh, Sissia, his partner, didn't quite make it on, but Sissia's really good as well because they're a very good combo. Sissia's great. She didn't quite make the top 20. I will say she's an honorable mention. I feel like she's she does even show up in teams without Cardiel, but she definitely shows up with them as well. Next up, speaking of ally attack, I think I'll have a video on Grand Oak Podrick out before this one. I'm going away for a few days, so I'm preparing stuff in advance. Um, Grand Oak Podrick, he's an absolute machine. My gosh, I, I think people really slept on how strong he is for Hydra. He is coming into some really high-end teams. So he has, again, this move, full team ally attack. The value of this in Hydra, you can do so much damage with a full team ally attack. It's crazy. Like a full team ally attack it is the hardest hitting single target nuke in the game by a, quite a, quite a well, not more than Trunda is sort of an exception, but outside of Trunda, it's, in, it's insane the damage that these moves can do. He also brings you turn meter fill with a cleanse and increased speed. By the way, he also fully restores destroyed max HP and heals you up so he can keep you alive. He stops decay, destroying your max HP, makes it easier to live. He's a speed booster, increased speed champ. Great combo with Nergigante Archer, for instance. She's your decreased speed, he's your increased speed. Bada bing, bada boom, we're good. Turn meter boost is great. He also buffs you up with whatever buffs you need. So if you don't have the increased defense or increased attack in on your team, you know, to boost up your damage dealers, he provides it, which is massive. And his A1 can decrease the cooldown of a random ally's active skill by two turns. It's a really solid kit for Hydra. The damage he's pumping out in teams is just insane. Grand Oak Podrick, yeah, he's he's come in as top tier. It's sort of subtle, I think. I think it, it's not immediately obvious just how strong kits like that are. But that's been sort of a lesson for, for Hydra. Um, yeah, some of these more sleeper kits. Someone that's obviously not a sleeper for Hydra, she's still definitely top 20, is Acrisia. Acrisia, she's the, the comfort pick for top tier damage, really. Enemy max HP in every move, decreased defense on her A1, the damage this stacks up, which is nice. The double hitter, single target nuke on her A3, the double hitter AoE nuke on her A2. Back when Acrisia first came out, she was like on another level. That's not quite true anymore. 
um like i, I mean we just saw the, the the top damage for hydra in the world there crazy is not in that top team but she is in a lot of very very good teams like really highly performing teams but as we get more stats, as we get champion empowerments and blessings and gear ascension, the problem with her and any enemy max HP champion is they can only hit so hard, <laughs> right? Like, you know, if you stack on protection set nine piece and fear all and, you know, yeah, all of these extra damage bonuses, champions like Taurus can just keep scaling and scaling and scaling and scaling and hitting harder and harder. And there's no cap. Enemy max HP, though, it does have a cap and, and you can actually reach that cap relatively easily actually um so there's a cap on enemy max hp which is gonna hold her back but she is still top tier at the moment she still absolutely slams the damage out she also takes half damage from aoe attacks so she's nice and easy to keep alive so yeah akrizia she is fantastic um i mean look if they ever bring out higher difficulties of hydra her damage will go up and it'll be easy to hit that that higher damage as the Hydra gets more defense and stuff, well, I guess now we've got, you know, six-star crushing rend and all that. So area bo area bonuses, I didn't even mention those. Ignore defense from area bonuses too. Maybe the higher defense from higher levels of Hydra well, wouldn't even matter if that was to happen. But yeah, Crazy would still scale up there. Um, next up on the list, a champion we all know and love from Arena. Personally, I hate in Arena. I don't have her and she's really annoying to fight against in Arena. Harima does make the top 20. Now, I do think she's probably going to fall off in the future. I think there's going to be stronger options, actually. But she's really, really good right now. Big reason, her 8th 2 is scaling up her defense. So she gets a 100% defense bonus. This is very common. 100% bonus attack, 100% bonus defense. I think Toshiro the Bloody, for instance, I think this mythical has a lot of potential because of his scaling as well. But th that's a very common feature for a lot of these top champions because Hydra's a really long fight. You can scale up and just do crazy damage. The big hard-hitting single target move with big defense, just the AoE decrease attack, but you probably don't build her with accuracy. Then the AoE that hits hard on a three turn, it can provoke, but again, you probably wouldn't build her for accuracy. Um, yeah, you can sort of see why I feel like Karima is probably going to be power crept uh, by other champs. Like a lot of her stuff, you're probably not building accuracy because you're going to lose damage. So not super, uh, you could... And again, reducing enemy ignore defense is not that useful for Hydra really at all. Is, is it, does it even do anything? I don't think so. But Harima, she's obviously insane for Arena, but the damage she pumps out in Hydra right now is, is really crazy. And you get that bonus of having a top tier Arena champion in the exact same gear, the exact same setup. She comes in and she's top tier Hydra as well. So she is great. Now, next up, a champion I think basically power creeps. I think he's a Harima, but better. Arima, but better, but just not many people have him, is Alaz the Sunbearer. So he comes in. What does Alaz do? Well, no, uh, on his passive number one, it's a little bit slower to stack up his defense because he has to counterattack, but he can stack up against that 100% defense bonus. That's maybe his only downside is this is a bit slower. But he comes in. He brings a two-target provoke, a two-turn, I should say, a two-turn provoke, which is way better for Hydra. That's really nice. Great. Can't be resisted if they're low on HP as well. That's great. You could even ditch accuracy if you wanted and just try to rely on that. Interesting. He gives counterattack to your whole team for two turns on a three turn. He also gives some block damage for one turn. So he helps you stay alive, which is nice. But the counterattack buff on everybody, that's going to add a lot of extra damage on the provoke is great utility. Then is A2. This move hits insanely hard. He puts increased attack on everyone before attacking as well. He is a defense scaling champion, so he hits harder. This move has just crazy multipliers, especially when targets are less than 50% HP. This works against decapitated heads. He gets the double hit and he just absolutely claps, right? He is, I think, the top defense damage dealer in the game for Hydra right now because of this. And he's also bringing this crazy utility. His A1 hits, you know, reasonably hard as well. It's not too bad, but he's insane. The funny thing is I did test him. I never published the video, actually. I did testing him on the test server. I actually found in my testing, it's not even worth his first form is so strong. It's not even worth switching him over. Like this is supposed to be good for Hydra, like increase resist strengthen, restoring destroyed max HP, A we burn, like extra hits on enemies under burn. Like I think he's supposed to be pretty decent for Hydra, honestly, in his form too. But form one is just so strong that it's not even worth swapping. <laughs> you just stay in form one. It's easier to play. It's much more simple, much more brain dead, and it's stronger. It's, it's funny. So Alaz is crazy. Next up, we've got Razzle Varg, a champ who is close to my heart. He's a fusion. 
Um, funny enough, like back when he was a fusion, there was huge debate as to whether or not he was good. Was he even worth it? I think Razalvark has really proved that he is worth it. He is a monster. Uh, because he scales off attack and speed, again, any of that extra speed is really good. More turns to hit hard in Hydra, do more damage. It's a great snowball. And again, he's benefited a lot as well from, you know, the, the Great Hull area bonuses. They really help. But he's got two short cooldown AoEs. He brings increased speed for your team, which is really, really nice. He does brings you Leech as well, can keep you topped up, which is great. Increase accuracy, you could build around too. He just hits really hard. He's got a speed aura, which is really good. He does a lot of damage. I, I'd expect he probably will be power crept eventually, but I mean, the damage, you guys have seen it. The damage Razzlevarg does in Hydra, it's just, it's surprising. It's really surprising just the way that he works. He just scales up, right? Because he stacks up to 100 extra speed. I guess that's probably the big thing to mention. 100 extra speed, it's a lot more turns and it's making him hit harder as well. And increased speed is multiplying that 100 extra bonus speed. It it all comes together and he is, he's a monster. He is shockingly strong, much stronger than I think all of us thought when we first saw him. Next up, another champ. I think he's very similar to Krisk, but with probably more damage. I, I think he's very similar in a lot of ways. His Grisor Iron Gut, really good champ. Probably the one of the best, if not the best, increased resist champs in the game. So he has an AoE, Provoke, with increased resist, increased defense. So helping your team stay alive and resist all the debuffs, that's great. He can be your solo Provoker with enough speed. He also has the AoE, enemy max HP hit. So he does really solid damage. It extends ally buffs too. Very common trends, honestly, in the top 20 list. Lots of champions that stack up to 100% bonus defense or attack, lots of ally attack, lots of buff extension, a little bit of enemy max HP in there as well. Um, but yeah, very, very strong move. Even his A1 is AoE. So this is nice. Every turn he does an AoE attack. So he actually gets quite a lot of damage out of that. Surprising amount. Even you could run him with, with War Master even, and you do a lot um, uh, with that. Very strong. Uh, he also works really well with gear sets. Slayer set really scales him up strong because it's all AoE. Slayer, he gets turn meter. He can hit extra times. It's very powerful. Uh, he works very well with the cursed set as well. Put him in curse set. Every attack's an AoE. He can be the hex champion for your team. There's a lot of potential with Grisor. He's been very, very solid. Um, he's not the top damage dealer in the game. Obviously, he only has the one uh, one hit enemy max HP, though it is a three-turn cooldown. Uh, but he, he's very strong performer. Another champion that's been very consistent, not a damage dealer, but a support, is Tuhanarak. Uh, she's really been a, a, one of the top premier uh, block buff champions for Hydra in the game. There's more options now, but she's for a long time was the best one. Now you've got like Feral and stuff as well competing too. But Tuhanarak comes in. Hers, it requires a little bit of finesse, right? Because it's a single target, decrease attack and block buffs. Then it does a debuff spread and spreads it around. So you have to manual this a little bit to make it as consistent as possible. She can debuff spread other debuffs. She has a decrease speed A1, which does some healing. She has increased defense and speed for your team. So she's a great increased speed champ, but also brings the decreased attack block buffs. And then she's cleansing debuffs off your team as well, which is protecting you from the true fears. It's protecting you from provokes and all of that stuff. So she has been, uh, again, I think it's, it's hard to judge how strong she is just from her kit. Like, yeah, it's kind of hard to judge the supports, but she's shown up in so many top teams as she does make my top 20. Lydia is up next. She's in, again, she was in that, wasn't, yeah, she was in the, the top team in the world right now. It's just, it's hard to understate the value of the, the decreased defense weekend, right? You need decreased defense in your team to do max damage. You, you need weaken if you want to top the damage charts as well in Hydra these days. You need it. It's essential. She also brings strength and an increased speed. Fantastic. Uh, she's got the single target block buffs, which can sometimes be enough or can make a difference. Um, yeah, again, Lydia has stood the test of time as being just an amazing champion that you can get relatively early in the game just by beating faction wars. I guess it's harder now. There's a lot more factions, but my gosh, for a champion that you can, everyone can get, she is just really, really strong. Lydia makes it into the top 20. Funny enough, I think, again, because of the, the, the weekend, I think Venus makes it in as well. Venus shows up in a lot of these top teams. AoE decreased defense weaken as a void, right? So it's guaranteed uh, on everything. Very strong. Venus is more offensive compared to Lydia. You don't get the defensive buffs and the increased speed, but you get AoE HP burn too. So she's going to add actually quite a bit of damage with that HP burn, which is pretty nice. Then her A1 can drop in some poisons as well. 
So yeah, Venus, she shows up in a lot of these top teams. Very solid. Again, I, I don't know. Like, the poisons, you have to manual it, obviously, to get max value. Maybe we, we will see her be power crept a bit. Maybe we'll see all these decreased defense weakened champions be power crept a bit in the future. But definitely right now, she's still top tier, no doubt. Uh, another top tier champion that a lot of people have, he was a guaranteed, Michinaki makes it in. Michinaki makes it in for sure. Why is he so strong? Well, he does a few things. Number one, he's got two, three turn cooldown AoEs when booked. Um, so he's just short cooldowns, blasting them out consistently. He's got a lot of utility as well. AoE buff removal, AoE hex, great. AoE decreased defense and decreased attack and HP burn on his A1. His kit is loaded up with crucial debuffs, basically, and effects. Very strong. Uh, on top of that, though, the thing that really makes him shine is Forcer of Curses, right, his passive. Whenever an ally attacks an enemy under Hex, 50% chance to team up and join the attack. Like, we saw this with Garol, we saw it with Cardial. These types of passive are just beast mode. It's very strong. Funny thing about it is... I think this worked like this at the start. Then Plarium came in. They changed the text of this passive to say, will not work against decapitated Hydra heads. Uh, I think that was their intention, that it wouldn't work against them. That's gone now. I think they tried and they couldn't code it right and they gave up. I don't know. Or maybe they're like, hey, you know what? Let's just leave him as he is. There's enough power creep in the game. It's not a problem. But it gives him a ton of power, right? Decapitated heads. They take a huge damage bonus. So he slams them with this with this A1 when they're under Hex. Half the time, anyone attacks them, extra hit against Decapitated Head. So you build them with high damage, increased defense in the team, and he's pumping out damage like crazy. The Hex debuff uh, duplicates 2% of AoE damage, but 10% of single target. So all of those big single target hits against Decapitated Heads with his passive adds up to a lot of extra damage through Hex. He is in a lot of these top-end teams. You guys have seen him. You know about it. Michinaki, he is a monster. I think the final two are going to surprise people. I think these are newer champions, uh, and their potential is only just starting to be explored. So the first champion I want to talk about is Fina Blade of Arabia. She actually is making my top 20. Now, I want to give a big shout out to, uh, to Bango. Bango from my clan. He's shown up in Hydra videos before. I was chatting to him about my list, and he actually talked me into putting Fina in the list. I was like, okay. And actually, the next champion as well, even Alaz the Sunbearer. Basically, he had a lot of insights into some of these newer champions that I wasn't quite up to speed on. But check this out. Now, this is on Brutal, mind you, but this is like 5 billion damage on Brutal with the Fina in there and some other champs. I didn't actually bring Bellinor onto the list, but you can guess why. He does good damage, decreased defense, weaken, shocker, void affinity. Wow. And, and other champs we've all talked about. But Fina coming in. Why is she so strong? And why I, I think the reason that we don't really know about it is she's super new. She is a faction unity champion. So just not a lot of people have her, but she's got massive potential. So, I mean, even in that team, it wasn't with that many high elves. It was with just the one. So it's, you know, she, you can be even stronger with other teams, but increase attack, crit rate, and crit damage for your team. If you've got the one uh, high elf in there, they had Bellinor, um, you get an extra turn. That's big. This is the big move, though. You will not falter. Three turn cooldown. Block debuffs, block damage, counterattack on an ally for two turns. That's nice. But if the target's not this champion, resets the cooldown of all of their skills. And that's big, right? Her A1 is kind of whatever. She actually gives you a lot of turn meter, a surprising amount of turn meter with her passive. It can be very, very good. And even a nice speed aura as well with great base stats. But this is what's so strong, I think, in particular, is you throw these buffs, especially with the one faction ally, which they had in that team. You get the extra turn. So you put out these buffs, extra turn, and then you go into this, right? You're putting six buffs on an ally champion. If you have her in nine piece protection, 5% bonus damage per buff. You have six buffs, 30% damage bonus. She can pump out onto your chosen damage dealer whilst also keeping them alive, whilst also resetting their skills. So they can just start pumping off their skills way more often. I think the potential for this champion is very, very, very high. She also crops up a lot in Trunda teams because obviously it's a full reset. She crops up for the Trunda teams as well and she brings in increased attack too and the crit rate, crit damage for the Trunda. So she's got a lot of potential. Uh, funny enough, like I, I I, said it that I preferred her quite a, quite a bit. You know, from, from my testing on the test server, I preferred her to Aislinn by a good bit. I think she, for, yeah, from what I've seen so far, I think she's actually way better than Aislinn. I don't know. We shall see moving forwards, but 
keep your eye on Fina. Don't sleep on this champion. I think she's actually phenomenal. And if they add more good high elves, Atharion, he's new. He doesn't make the list, but you know, if they add more new high elves that are really strong, she's got great potential. I think the big ones for this faction would be Belenor and Atharion. You know, even Lanathril could come in. It's just the ally attack. He doesn't have much else for Hydra, like Grand Oak Podrick, for instance, brings a lot more, but maybe I've even seen some stuff with her in Islin. Uh, who's a solid Hydra champ, not top 20 by any means, but he's solid. He has high elf to combo with her. You know, like if you do get the three faction allies, ignore 5% defense for each buff on them. Like there's a ton of potential to find out, but already she's pumping out some crazy teams and she's only just come out. So she does make the list for me. And then finally, again, this is a champion that I had slept on and that's actually Androk the Glorious. I, I did not expect this. Bango, a shot into Bango. And he sort of opened my eyes to this guy's potential. So here we go. This is actually the team that was like, oh, okay. You know, Androk is legit. Two billion damage on Nightmare Hydra. We've got, you know, all the champs we talked about before. Makage with Archer, Garol, Lady and Taris. Shocker, shocker. In this case, actually, Garol is way out damaging the Taris. But we've got Androk in there. Androk, what is going on? Why is Androk good? A lot of stuff he does is good. AoE increased defense for your team, albeit only on a one turn on his A1. It's still nice. He has the AoE ally buff extension with healing. That's nice. He basically keeps you alive. Increased resist, strengthen, and continuous heal, and then even more continuous heals. So he's bringing you, obviously, tons of defensive buffs. Keeps your team alive. Increased resist is great for Hydra. Uh, and he's extending your buffs. That's great. Super tank. Okay, that's amazing. But how is he adding to our damage? I think it's this passive. Each critical hit inflicted by allies fills the turn meters of all allies by 5%. So if you bring him in with multi-hit champions, with ally attack champions, uh, with champions like the passes we talked about, right? Again, like we look at this team, Brent, we've got the ally attack in there. Um, Lydia is constantly pumping out uh, counterattacks with her thing as well, right? Um, Garol comes in with that chance to join in on ally attacks. All that, so any of these extra attacks, and if you've got your team built with 100% crit rate, you can be pumping an absolute ton of turn meter into your team. And that, I think, is really, really powerful, like for trying to push up and hit the turn limit, like on Nightmare Hydra, and squeeze as much damage out as possible. Very, very strong. So yeah, uh, Androk, I was aware, obviously, of Androk before, uh, because, because of this, basically, decrease resist, weaken, and feeble. Uh, because this was working against bosses. I think it maybe still is, but it is going to be changed. Um, but yeah, because you could enfeeble the Hydra, like you could just stop all... The, they were just weak hit and they can't do any debuffs on weak hits and they don't do no damage. It's decreased defense. So like, it was like, okay, that's kind of cool, right? But no, I think it's actually the passive on his first form with a turn meter boost that is the big thing. I mean, 2 billion damage on Nightmare Hydra. That's insane, right? So for me, he does make the top 20. So there you go. There are a lot of champs that I wanted to include here that I couldn't. Like Mithrala Lifebane didn't quite make the top 20. Or like Zissio was in contention. Like Nekmothar was not. Like there, there's a bunch of really good champs that just didn't quite make it. Uh, and like I said, I, I do think, you know, we've got pretty high potential at like Toshiro and Atharion and all of that to, to make it into the top 20 in the future as well. So I'm very curious to see where, if this does become a series that we do on the channel and on hellhades.com, where it will go in the future. But man, there are a lot of really powerful champions coming into the game at the moment. They're redefining a lot of how Hydra works and like the damage that people are pumping out is great. Like when I was doing research for this, I was seeing people even in the last three months go from like 1 billion to 2 billion on Hydra with these non-trended teams. Like the, the, the damage growth that we're seeing is is just crazy right now. So who knows where we'll, in like two or three months, who knows where we'll be, right? Who knows where we will be? It's it's that nuts right now. So there you go. They are my list. That's my list for the top 20. Let me know if there was anyone obvious that you felt I left out or anyone you were shocked I put in. Hopefully I've explained everything clearly here and it's been informative and insightful and you've enjoyed it. But yeah, thank you for watching everybody. That's my top 20 plus Trunda extras. And uh, I'll see you next time. Hit the like button. If you're Trenda, hit the like button 25 times and I'll see you then. Goodbye.